it's mock draft time, baby! That's right, we are doing a mock draft. We asked you, the Foot Clan, where do you want us to draft from? We are drafting from the seven spot, and we are going as one team so we can really talk through the strategy of each round and what, how to look at not only between the players who are on the board, but what might come later. And we're never not working. On today's episode, we are getting into some really cool, really scary statistics about what happens when three wide receivers are all being drafted from the same team and how that usually comes out. Stay tuned. You're going to love it. Make sure you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and watch the show. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness. I don't want none of those. No. Renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, wait, is it football time? It is football time. Oh, crap. <laughs> Go back. No, oh, I'm so sorry, America. Oh. The ship has sailed, Mike. This is... I'm a failure. ...a live recorded podcast. I don't even know what day it is. Well, it's Thursday, Mike. Thursday, August 19th. Some call it football time. We call it mock draft time. That's what's happening on today's show. Apologies to all the Patriots and Eagles fans playing tonight. It is football time. The fans are playing tonight? Yes, the fans. It's a, <laughs> In preseason, they, they play the starters for a quarter, and then they bring them out and they put the fans against each other. And I'll tell you, man, if you want a, a wild game, you want the Eagles fans against the Patriots fans, that's going to be a hullabaloo. Yeah, I can't speak to the Patriots fans. We haven't done a live show in New England, but I can speak to the Philly fans. <laughs> yeah. They're a rowdy bunch. We do have a jam-packed show today. I think this will be the most entertaining preseason week we get. Right, should so be. We're at the uh, you know three a year now, new seventeen game schedule. A lot of teams have said they're going to give starters the half, right? So we'll we'll get to see a little bit more this week. I and overreact to all of it. I can't wait. Oh yeah. Uh, a reminder: we're doing a live stream tonight. We have the Ultimate Draft Kit for Life giveaway. For life. And so uh, if you pick up the Ultimate Draft Kit to help you with your upcoming drafts and you do it before 7.30 p.m. tonight when we're in the middle of that live stream, uh, you will be eligible to win an Ultimate Draft Kit for Life. We're also going to give away a signed DK Metcalf jersey. And uh, it does not come with his muscles, unfortunately. Just the jersey. Dang it. I mean, you could get like a muscle suit and then put and the, then jersey, put the on, jersey on. You know, like Arrested I, Development style. They probably have to account for his muscles when they print that jersey up. It's very flexible. Uh, and so the winner will be announced during the live stream. If you want to watch that, ballerslive.com will be live on YouTube, Twitch, uh, Twitter, Facebook. So very, very excited about that. And, and a reminder. Deep breaths. If you've already picked up the UDK from February to now, you are entered to win automatically. So you're not missing out. You don't have to, I mean, you could rebuy it, I guess. You could go buy it again. For a friend. But it will be very, the second one you get will be very similar to the first, content-wise. Well, it's probably updated since you first got it, but pretty <laughs> similar. Yeah. So I once you buy it, you're good. And uh, anybody who buys it before 7.30 p.m. tonight at ultimatedraftkit.com, You'll be all good to go. A couple other reminders. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Jason is at Jason FFL. Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. Socials, other ones. We got Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. You can watch the show. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. And the community is jointhefoot.com. We are the MIB today. Oh, we're all wearing... Oh, I yeah. see the men in black. Yeah, we uh, apparently we all felt a little puffy this morning. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> I feel puffy every morning, Mike. So I uh, had a big piece of cake last night. My <laughs> wife made a cake, and um, well, I had a I had a potato soup. Mm. 
It was very good. I mean, the cake sounds better. Oh, I could eat potato soup and follow that up with cake at any point. What, so. were, what were we feeling like when we decided to go the uh, the dark salmon colored shirts at the same time last week? Oh, very fit. Whenever you wear salmon, you're letting people know <laughs> that you're you're feeling you know, hot to trot. The color experts did come out in droves. What was the official verdict? Uh, like a red sienna. Ooh. I think that, that one came up. Okay. I have... I would say I don't know what that is, but I have the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm really excited. We've got the, uh, a new segment that we debuted last week. Great feedback. We had, a, we had an awesome discussion about running backs in the second and third rounds, rookie running backs, and we're breaking it, uh, breaking it down again today. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Very excited to be into this segment once again. Uh, you know, we want to be fantasy players that have an edge over our opponents. They got the bachelor's degree. We want the master's degree. Every little advantage helps. Had a great discussion last week on what happens to rookie running backs when... You know, they get drafted with high draft capital and the incumbents there. What are the odds of the running back performing? What are we talking about today? Yeah, so we're never not working, and we're working it with wide receivers who are drafted together from the same team. Three wide receivers going in the same draft, all top 60 in the, in the wide receiver ADP. What happens when a team does that? Because think about it, there, there's one of two ways to, to look at um, why – Three wide receivers are drafted, um, and and their outcomes. One is that this is a great offense. This is an offense that you want pieces of. You grab them. It's exciting. It's explosive. Uh, get pieces of it. And the other is there's a lot of mouth to feed. There's there's three guys that are being drafted together. So we wanted to take a look at historical ADP and say what happens for those teams. Would would it be all right if I brought up the teams this year? that fit that mold sure we can we can skip to the end to start but i like i like that and i do like that i do like that so what are the well, teams because you're, you're about to give a bunch of numbers about the historical information i'd like people to have those teams in their head yeah there are six teams this season uh with that so name those teams Andy. so you have tampa bay with evans godwin and brown mm -hmm. and that's kind of the headliner you have pittsburgh with deontay johnson claypool and juju you have miami with fuller Wa uh, waddle and parker Jacksonville with Chark, uh, with the three juniors, Chark, Chenault, and Jones. And then uh, you have Dallas with CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, and Amari Cooper. And you have the Bengals with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd. Some of those are being drafted that way due to indecision. Some are due to excitement. So over the last three years, there's been 14 different times that we have run into this situation. And so we went and we looked back 2018. Uh, there were four teams that did that, and we wanted to see how often do they hit on their ADP. Do they do they return? Are there three wide receivers in the top fifty at the end of the year? Um, and and even more so, um, how how does it you know are are there two good ones from the team? So in 2018, there were four teams, and none of them had the ended the season with three. Uh, wide receivers in the top 60. None of them returned that. But even more important... Fully returned. Fully returned. You're saying we're all three where uh, we're inside that top right. 50. But if we look at, well, what about how many times those teams ended up with just two wide receivers in the top 36? That's it. Just two in the top 36. One of those four teams returned that. In 2019, there were six teams that were drafted, same as this year. Not one of them returned three wide receivers in the top 50 and only one of them returned two in the top 36. So it's a pretty big miss in 2020 last year, four more teams drafted with three in the top 60. Again, none of them, or I'm sorry, one finished with uh, three. Oh, we finally did. We it. finally did it over the last three years. One team has returned all three in the top 50 ADP, but only that same team only once uh, in the top 36 multiple wide receivers. So to summarize it, basically we have had 14 different teams that have had this being drafted and only one team has had that trio finish inside the top 50 at wide receiver and only one per year that has two top 36 wide receivers. So this is a 
it's a little bit scary when you look at the teams this year and the way that I look at it, because obviously we, we need the context. Not every team is built the same. But I feel like there are three teams this year I really like. Like, I like the options. I like the offense. I think they have a good chance at going against the grain on these numbers. But there are three teams that when you look at this data over the last three years and you go, well, they, they tend to basically there's a lot of mouths to feed and they don't hit together and they don't normally even have two top 36 wide receivers. When I look at Jacksonville, Miami, and Cincinnati, like that's scary to me. See, I actually take a different view of that information. I don't care about those three teams. Those three teams are being drafted that way not because – fantasy players believe the three players will end up producing they're drafted that way because they're trying to figure out which player will produce on those bad teams you're shooting your shot on those teams whereas I'm much more concerned about Tampa Bay Pittsburgh and um what's the team Dallas. I'm missing? and Dallas because those players are being drafted exceptionally high with high expectations, a good example is Chase Claypool, right? But if the data says that oftentimes two players don't produce, then I, you know, that's why I'm afraid of Claypool. That's why I would be afraid of a, you know, a CD Lamb. That's why I would be afraid of an Antonio Brown or even a Godwin, where it's like, okay, on the surface, this one player can hit a ceiling. But if the data says that when three players have high expectations on a good offense, it's even rare for two of them to hit the ceiling. It freaks me out a little bit because, you know, one of those guys isn't for sure, right? Like right. Deontay, Claypool, Juju. One of them's not going to deliver. Maybe two won't. Well, I, I you know, it, it is worth saying that's, you know, this is past results do not guarantee future success. This is not a guarantee that all three can't hit, but it is to look at the probabilities and say, usually this doesn't happen. Um, and I totally get what you're saying, right? The, you want, you're trying to take your shot. You go to the Bengals, and you're trying to take your shot at who's going to be the guy uh, because maybe it'll be Higgins or maybe it'll be Chase. Um, but but really, when you dive deeper into the exact teams, we've got the full data uh, You know that we're not trying to just read through our spreadsheet. And oftentimes, when only one of them hits, it was just a superstar and a bunch of ancillaries. It was, TY, it, it was uh, Tyree Kill being great, and then <laughs> the rest of the way. It was Devontae right. Adams being great, and then... <laughs> the rest of the way um <laughs> how I, is it again uh well here's no, where it's not whacking. i don't think it's i don't think it's jamar chase is great and <laughs> the rest of the way when i look at these bad teams i i really i get scared and i say i'm just gonna avoid them personally that's that's how i interpret this data because i'm not really excited well, and i'm trying to think oh well, maybe maybe this guy or maybe that guy but the reality is maybe it is all three of them uh, enough where yeah where they take from each other and there's not enough volume and excitement the nice thing is is Jacksonville's be I mean those three players 32 40 and 58 that's their wide receiver spot that they're being drafted even Cincinnati 24 28 39 uh, Miami's 42 46 57 I have to spend up on Evans and Godwin 15 and 18 I have to spend up on Johnson and Claypool I certainly have to with Lamb and Cooper um Mike, I, Mike, what are your takeaways from that information? Uh, my takeaways are, I mean, I'm, a, I'm probably avoiding Jacksonville here. Uh, Miami is troublesome. And then for the people like, well, last year, you know, the Steelers all had, the Steelers had three great wide receivers. Chase Claypool wasn't drafted inside of the, the top 60 at the wide receiver position. That's why we're, they don't factor into this. But they succeeded. Last year, Dallas succeeded. And that's despite, uh, like Michael Gallup, you know, slipped inside the top 40 wide receivers. And that is in spite of Andy Dalton being the quarterback. So I'm I'm still fine with uh, going in on Tampa, Dallas, and Pittsburgh. But the other, I mean, especially like Cincinnati, that's it's concer that's a concerning trend. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Boyd is being drafted the latest at wide receiver 39. And he feels like he Boyd should be safe. He should be a, a PPR guy. Maybe he doesn't have a ceiling, but uh, yeah, Tyler Boyd should easily finish inside the, yeah, these the are, top 50. These are all top 40 drafted. Uh, you know, the other two are drafted basically almost as a wide receiver two, and the data says that they have 
you know, odds are not in their favor that even two of them finish in the top 36. And that's with a currently, you know, coming back from injured second year quarterback. A lot of red flags. All right. Get up to 100% dandruff protection. Uh, that's never not working. Just like that segment with head and shoulders, scalp, shield technology available at walmart.com. We have a mock draft coming, but let's uh, let's cover some news first. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. There are a number of just like real quick monitor these injury situations mm -hmm. news. DJ Moore hurt his back on Wednesday, re-aggravated it Thursday, left practice. Robbie Anderson's already banged up, so Terrence nothing. Marshall. Yeah, nothing too concerning yet. Um, AJ Dillon. Didn't do any teamwork on Wednesday. He has a calf injury. Melvin Gordon dealing with a minor groin injury. Kept him out ah. of uh, the first preseason game. Obviously, for groin injuries, we all know mm. the best resource, groinindex.com. We have updated groinindex.com. Yeah. We've really given it a facelift to make sure that if you have any questions on groin injuries, uh, groinindex.com is where you want to ah. go. And I know you're going to feel um, worried with typing that URL. In, oh, into it's, your brain. Yeah, you're it's gonna, safe. you're gonna, safe this, is, this is completely safe for work. Ah. <laughs> uh, groinindex.com. Just protect yourselves out there. Yeah, very important website that we, I think it might be our biggest, our greatest accomplishment in the last seven years. Yeah, yeah for yeah, all of humanity. Yeah, we're a groin focused podcast. Ah. Uh, Cole Komet missed due to a hamstring injury. So keep an eye on Cole Komet, I guess, or don't. Yeah, <laughs> that was today's news and notes presented that's, by that Sleeper. Is savage. <laughs> oh, oh, let's be honest. We haven't talked about Cole Komet very much at all. We haven't. Breakout tight end who really got on the field more at the end of last year and is coming into the second year with Jimmy Grandpa ahead of him is not happening this year. Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't think Al Borland was comfortable with me describing the show as a growing focused podcast. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Is, That's it, fair is as, that not as what well. You, not, not what you signed up for? Uh, I didn't think so. When, when here people ask you what you do for a living, you don't bring that up. I'm a producer for a groin focused podcast. <laughs> I want you to do that next time. You got yeah. it. All right. Uh, that was today's news notes brought to you by Sleeper, the largest dynasty platform out there. Definitely check them out. Um, about to draft our family league. And get the leagues, all of our, all the league setup stuff is happening right now. You know, setting schedules and getting things ready to go. Also, literally about to do a mock draft yes. uh, with Sleeper because it is the easiest place. In fact, if you are in a keeper league, um, or you know, and your 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 league has a very nuanced, you know, people have this player kept or this this thing traded. You can actually set up custom mock drafts in Sleeper Ooh. for your league like that. That's a that's new this year. So uh, check them out at Sleeper. All right, let's move on. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Very excited about this mock draft. We have not done a mock recently where the three of us shared a team. Uh, oftentimes, in recent history, we've all we've gone head-to-head. -head. I think I was out one week. You guys went head-to-head. -head. And so we, we like to do that, and we're going to do that again next week. But this week, we're going to share a team. It gives us some time to discuss, debate, argue, um, and more time to kind of break down our thoughts around the picks, which is what's valuable about mock drafting. Yeah, the, the goal here is to see different strategies, talk them out, and, and think ahead as to what happens if you go this direction or that direction. Um, it's a real Robert Frost poem situation here, um, and we're going to take the path Did you less just traveled. make... A Robert Frost reference. I sure did. And the quote was what? The We're going to take the, the path less traveled? Is it the path or the road? Is it the road? Oh, man. I just, le just leave me alone. <laughs> I, just let it go. <laughs> like, you, you, Don't drill down on this one. Just, I barely got the name right. <laughs> yeah, you you were going to call him Robert Froster first of no, all. No, I think it was uh, I, Frost, and then I was like, that's wrong. It's Robert Frost. Like a Robert Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> the the wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. But no, if you're going to try and sneak in like a <laughs> real dignified literary <laughs> reference, 
<laughs> you're, getting, you're getting fact checked. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> he's he's looking up the oh, quote yeah. right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stephen King once said, <laughs> "I had this memorized once upon a time, but I think I was in like seventh grade, so okay. it's been a minute." <laughs> we are doing a twelve-team half PPR, <laughs> one quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, tight end flex defense, and we threw a poll up on Twitter and let the Foot Clan decide where we're drafting from. And so we are at the seven spot in this draft. Let's get it going. Christian McCaffrey goes 101, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, and then you've got Henry, Barkley, and Chubb. So the top six picks mm, off the board. Perfect. There is uh, there's an aim at seven that, that I, I would certainly go with if this was my team and my team alone. But, uh, you know, Jonathan Taylor, Zeke, you got the wide receivers, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill. You've, You've got, got other Kelsey. options. Yeah. Uh, this, this is the point. I think the seventh spot is one of those where you have to decide how many of the running backs you really love. And you say, man, they are anchors. They are true cornerstones to my team. That's my belief of this player in 2021. And if one of them dropped to you, uh, it's pretty easy to pull the trigger on a true cornerstone piece. If not... If those guys are gone and you're debating between kind of that next tier of running back where you're saying they're good, but do I want to take a good running back or do I look at the best wide receiver? Do I go grab Devontae Adams or Travis Kelsey, grab one of those stud tight ends? We have not yet left a draft uh, in recent memory without one of those big three tight ends. And so here at the seventh spot, you can go Adams. You could go Kelsey, or for me, there is still a cornerstone running back available. Yeah, Ezekiel Elliott would be my pick. And that is who it is for me as well. And for me, the decision will come down to, do you prefer Zeke or do you prefer Aaron Jones? And I have Zeke one spot ahead of, of Aaron Jones, so I'm good with that pick. We're yep. comfortable. Yep. Look and at us all on the same page. With, with, Look at us. With Chubb going at uh, Team 6, I, I agree with you. I would have gone Zeke here. I would have gone Aaron Jones with the next pick, and then at 9 – uh, is where I would based that's, on how this draft that's the went. Kelsey switch. That is At where nine, I we draw the Kelsey. line. Not necessarily, but I do appreciate the rhyme. Okay, Zeke at <laughs> one hundred seven. Good time. Our first pick. Jonathan Taylor went next, then Aaron Jones. So you have the first nine picks of running backs, then Hill. So your first wide receivers: Tyreek, then Adams, Eckler, sneaks into the back of the first round. Good for you. <sighs> awesome. Way to go! Awesome. Eckler. Isn't he joining the show soon? Brooksy? Look, there's rumors. There's rumors. But, like, confirmed rumors, right? What? No, they're, they're rumors. Are they just rumors right now? They, they're they nodding that they're just rumors. I think they're okay. confirmed. I think, he, I think he's joining it's us. It's mostly it, confirmed. It depends on his practice schedule. We'll make some time, Austin. We come Austin. second? Austin? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Eckler, we got you into the first round. We call you Awesome Excellent. Yeah. That's your name now. Get now, on the show, bro. We're we're reverting now back to just awesome Eckler. Now he did come on the show again last year, right? Uh, I think so. And, show he, and he got a little banged up. Yeah. So hopefully he doesn't associate the two. <sighs> All right, DeAndre Hopkins starts the second round, then digs. Kelsey drops to two oh three in this draft. Oh, oh, a little Kansas City stack there for Team Ten. Yeah, Team Ten went Hill Would, and uh, Kelsey. Are you opposed to that? Going Hill and Kelsey no, there? No, I, I, I am not. You, you'd be you, happy about it? I am 100%. Kansas City barbecue in the first and second round? I mean, we, we talked about <laughs> uh, stacks on yesterday's tips and tricks episode. This is a different type, and this doesn't give you the upside, but it gives you a little bit more consistency. But specifically, if you can get Hill and Kelsey, that means you get all of the Kansas City Chiefs offense. Metcalf goes next in Mahomes, and here we are on the clock. 206, we have our foundation running back, Ezekiel Elliott. There are still a number of good running backs available from Mixon, Harris, Gibson, uh, Clyde's there. Najee. You could. Um, at wide receiver. Um, Ridley. Yep, Calvin Ridley, A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson. Uh, I think it's too early to snag a Kittle Waller for my taste over the types of like a Calvin Ridley or an Antonio Gibson um and so now this is where what we're what we're really deciding with our second pick is almost less about who we're taking here because there's a handful yeah. of guys I'm happy yeah. with but it's more about how do we want the next round and, and thereafter to go because if we take a wide receiver here there's a good chance we're looking at running back next round and questioning can Clyde Edwards Lair fall to us there could Joe Mixon fall to us there? 
I don't think I'm going to be happy with the running back that falls to us at 307. I think I'll be content with a wide receiver that does. So it makes uh, me I, lean towards us deciding between Gibson, Harris, and Mixon. I completely agree with you. I, I love Calvin Ridley. He's as good as any of these players. But at if we were closer to the turn, so if you're drafting from the second or the third spot, that's where that third round you can find Clyde Edwards a layer a lot, and I love that. But I, I agree with you, Andy. So let's go running back and decide. Those are the exact same names I would be looking at. It that at wide receiver for me, if Calvin Ridley's here in the middle of the second round, that's full stop at the wide receiver position. But running back, I would I have them ordered Najee, Clyde Gibson, Mixon. Uh, but I know that both of you are higher on Joe Mixon than I am. Are you willing to take at this point, like having gone through the off season, Jason? Thoughts on Najee in general in the middle of the second round. Yeah, I mean, this is where he belongs. He Volume trumps everything, and he is going to get the volume. Um, would I necessarily take him over the success we've seen on the field already from an Antonio Gibson in a larger role? Probably not. Over a Joe Mixon who pretty much is it's the same thing as, as Najee. He's got the job completely to himself. Um, my rankings would actually go uh, Joe Mixon, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Antonio Gibson. We talked yesterday about the value of a touch and getting those targets mm -hmm. at the running back position. I still believe that Joe Mixon has the highest reception total of the three players, so he would be my vote. It would be Mixon slightly above Harrison Gibson. Uh, that, that's fine. I've I've figured we were going Joe Mixon. So I, you just I made a concession speech yeah. in your own head? Yep. I was just letting everyone know I would not take Joe Mixon here, but I'm sure that we are going to. <laughs> You were the one who talked about the value of a touch. Yeah. Oh, and that's why I would, that's you, why I would believe, be Najee Harris. You believe Najee Harris is going to have more receptions than Joe Mixon? I believe that. It's a he, pretty. Yeah, I think he will. Okay. I, I think they will both probably have about the same touches. I, I really do. But having Giovanni Bernard out of the way opens up a lot of work in the passing game for Joe Mixon. And, and uh, he's pretty much like a Ezekiel Elliott light. So we got two, two really true three down workhorse type running backs on our my, roster now. my heart I'll, I'll tell you this mike my heart wanted to take Najee there oh okay. because of the uh and this is what happens with young star players you just you know any fatigue or any of those bad emotions we talked about on the tips and tricks show with sure. joe mixon like somehow i believe in joe but sometimes i don't want to draft him sometimes i want to draft Najee or i want to draft gibson and see the infinite upside before we move on to our next pick Foot Clan, new FanDuel fantasy players. Your day is about to get 20% better. Start playing fantasy this football season, and FanDuel will give you a 20% bonus on your first deposit up to $500. That's, as we say on this show, BTB. That's big a big-time time bonus. That's, that's a big-time bonus, and all you need to do uh, to claim this offer is make your first deposit. FanDuel and Daily Fantasy, it is the perfect pairing to your season-long leagues. You get to set a new lineup every day. We just talked about sometimes, you know, sometimes Andy's feeling Joe Mixon. Sometimes he's feeling Najee Harris. In your season-long, you you don't get both. That's true. But, but take, take Najee there and then go over to FanDuel and say, I'm going to play some lineups with the other guy. You make They have a bunch of different type of game formats. The main slate, which is picking players from all the all the Sunday games, a single game, you know, on the island. Very exciting on a watching a primetime game, picking from only those players. Best ball, snake dress. They have private contests that you can play with your friends. If FanDuel will will take your uh, your fantasy season to the next level. Experience season long wins without the season long wait. Sign up today at FanDuel.com slash FFF to claim your bonus and start playing today. That's FanDuel.com slash FFF. Age and location restrictions apply. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires after 30 days. And we want to thank Code Academy for helping us become smarter, better programmers. There's never been a better time to learn programming. And simply put, Code Academy is the best way to learn how to code online. They not only teach you job-ready coding skills, but also help you build unique projects for your portfolio, earn certificates, and even prep for technical interviews. Andy, I know your your my son, son is loves it. Yeah, he's loving it. I was super happy. Like since for fantasy football, if you're if you know how to program in R, that is something that I have really wanted to learn, and I was very happy to see Code Academy teaches R. They teach PHP. 
PHP, HTML, CSS, SQL, JavaScript. I mean, when you want to get this very important skill, Code Academy is the way a, to go. We live in a virtual world now. You should probably know how to do some coding. Absolutely. So everything that you want, tools, cheat sheets, uh, help ideas stick through Code Academy. Join the millions of people learning to code with Code Academy and see where coding can take you. Get 15% off your Code Academy Pro membership when you go to CodeCademy.com and use the promo code BALLERS. That's promo code BALLERS at CodeCademy.com for 15% off Code Academy Pro, the best way to learn to code. That is C-O-D-E. C A D E M Y dot com promo code ballers. Ezekiel Elliott in the first, Joe Mixon in the second. So we took Joe. And Gibson was the next pick. Ridley, Harris, Edwards Alaire, Justin Jefferson, and J.K. Dobbins finishing the first round. Oh, hey Dobbins. Hey Dobbins. Uh, Darren Waller at three oh one, McLaurin Dobbins. and then Kittle at three oh three. So we will not have one of the top three tight ends in this draft. They're gone. Keenan Allen, Antonio or AJ Brown, and David Mopportunity. Yeah, and and really, uh, David Montgomery would have been the last running back. You know, we were choosing: do we want to go? Well, we like the running backs left in this round. When we're if we go wide receiver in the previous round, and Montgomery fits that bill for me. But after him, we would have been selecting our running back two out of Chris Carson, Josh Jacobs, DeAndre Swift, Miles Sanders. Like personally. I am not about those guys. Like I, I'm not in love with those players by comparison to C.D. Lamb and Allen Robinson and some of the wide receivers that are are available here. Mike, where where's your head here? What do you want to do with this pick? We've got, like you said, Robinson, Lamb. You got Evans. You've got Godwin, Cooper, DJ would, Moore. At the running back position, I would be open to Chris Carson. I have him slotted one spot ahead of David Montgomery. I. I I believe that Chris Carson will be the leader of the Seahawks after receiving the bag, and they're, I mean, they're a high-scoring run-first offense. So Chris Carson is interesting here. And then over at the wide receiver position, he's, he's at the top of the ADP for a reason, and it's Allen Robinson who's just a real solid wide receiver one for your team. It doesn't feel like top five is in the range of outcomes for Robinson. I won't say it's impossible because he certainly has the talent. Maybe Andy Dalton, who's he says it's his time. Oh gosh, you see that? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's cute. Justin Fields, good, good for you, Dalton. Good. Justin Fields is going to have his time in a great career, but this is my time. Good for you, Dalton. And you're right. This is your time. Yes. The claim preseason. It, claim it quickly. It is going to be gone soon. It will be bedtime. Yes. Very soon. Uh, and so, but maybe maybe Andy Dalton is is solid for a couple stretch, or that the move happens to. <laughs> What did I say? For a couple stretch? Oh, for for a couple games, for a stretch of games. Uh, and then, or maybe we move over to Justin Fields, and he's as advertised. And then Allen Robinson's ceiling does move up. Allen Robinson. But for a wide receiver one, this is that's where I would be. Yeah, going. Allen Robinson has been a back-to-back -back top 12 wide receiver. He's been a fantasy wide receiver one. He is my wide receiver eight right now. Uh, that would be my personal pick. And when you're grabbing your first wide receiver in the third round, it's very nice to have a guy who's going to be north of 150 targets. Is that where we're going? Yeah, I think because the other names like Evans, Evans is going to be solid, but he's got some questions. We just talked about the three wide receiver uh, conundrum, Godwin, Ceedee Lamb. I mean, these guys. To all, me, it's between Ceedee Lamb and, and Allen Robinson. Yeah, so we'll take Robinson. Are, are you, so are you're to the point where you are comfortable Ceedee Lamb being your wide receiver one? In the I, draft. I am comfortable with that. Again, okay. I, I took Allen Robinson here because I'm even more comfortable with yeah, 150 yeah. guaranteed targets. But um, You also would have stacked Zeke and Lamb. Right. you taken Lamb yeah. there. Yeah, that, that's something to consider. Another tiebreaker reason to go Allen Robinson's way. After Robinson comes Jacobs, Evans, Swift, Allen, and Lamb finishing the third round. Julio at the top of the fourth with Carson, Cooper, Murray and Miles Sanders. I do think that the dip on Miles Sanders may be a little too exaggerated in the fantasy world right now. Fourth round is that's solid. That's solid value for Miles. That's what I mean. I, I think that, you know, it's very clear from like he's still the guy well, he, in he, Philly. They're going to share the load 
but he's still the guy at the top of that depth chart. Yeah, I totally agree. The the biggest question for Miles Sanders comes down to what about the passing game? You know, yesterday's show, we the value of a touch is, I mean, a reception is worth almost 3x what a rushing attempt is in a half-point scoring format. That doesn't even factor in what it's worth in a PPR. But last year, it, the, it was tough. he had the drops ranked out, I believe, as the worst uh, pass-catching running back per pro football focus. You have Boston Scott still established as a as a top level third down scat back satellite back. They draft Kenneth Gainwell, uh, so that's my concern for Miles Sanders. Just that the ceiling is is not truly there. But for for the 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 guy number one on the depth chart, the fourth round is fine. I really like what happened here with the players that came back to us. Okay, in the fourth round because there are two and you guys can maybe de debate which one you'd rather take. Two that I love here. One of them is Chris Godwin. Okay. Um, Chris Godwin in the middle of the fourth round. I think he has such great potential with Tom Brady this season. Last year was hijacked by injury. This is a player that's finished in the top, you know, he's number two overall two years ago. I will, I'll give you some breaking news right now. He's not a my guy on tomorrow's episode, but he's as close as you could have gotten to a my guy because of the price to value ratio for me on on Chris Godwin so I'd love to pair like Robinson Godwin talk about incredible yeah, target solid. numbers and reception guys to go with Zeke and Mixon or or you go and you look at the running back room Ooh, I and, you, for a and you say Daryl Henderson yeah. who I yep. somehow have higher than both of you guys after I've reappropriated my mind to that backfield and what that team's going to do but Henderson has real top 15 upside in the middle of the fourth round. Yes, he does. Jason, where are you on Henderson? Um, I, I Henderson is like the only guy in these middle rounds who I love at running back because he is undervalued. He's someone that is a pretty much guaranteed to be a top 20 running we back. We have to take him. Um, and, and I'm fine with that. Personally, I, the, the wide receiver I would have looked at would have been Tyler Lockett here. I think the boom nature mixed with Allen Robinson's consistency is is phenomenal. But if you are grabbing three running backs in the top four rounds, it allows you to really – You might get Lockett next round. You could. You could. Oh, man. Oh, man. That would be <laughs> – Let's let's follow along. I'd be, I'd be hot and bothered. <laughs> the glasses would fog up. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm 100% I'm fine taking Daryl Henderson here. Uh, now that you've started three out of your first four picks running back, you really want to focus on grabbing a lot of shots at wide receiver. And Daryl Henderson – the only reason that Daryl Henderson – uh, to me is is here is in this running back dead zone where generally you know it it can be sketchy grabbing uh, or drafting a running back here but because of the the timing of the Cam Akers injury the he hasn't had a chance to establish himself in ADP and become like the guy for the Rams and Jason oh brother keep, keep it safe for work yeah oh man so we took daryl henderson and then um jason watched the screen godwin lamar woods etn cup gaskin oh none of those are named tyler lockett oh but you know who is fifth round tyler lockett <laughs> dj moore kyle pitts what? i don't even know what that deontay means. johnson cream hunt andrews and hawkinson the tight end run happened and because it happened with pitts andrews hawkinson the next tier Tyler Lockett sitting here in the middle of the seventh, uh, fifth round. It, it's really funny, Ty, uh, you know. And I Hawk assume we're taking him. Yes. I'm going to bring up another yes. name though. Okay. okay. While while you do that, I'll just describe real quick. I I I really like uh, T.J. Hawkinson. I believe he's going to break out this year, but I haven't had him in many drafts because really because of the value of Tyler Lockett. The, the it's it's they go so near each other in each draft. Yeah. And if I'm one spot ahead of him, then great, I'm taking Tyler Lockett. But here. I'm one spot behind him, and great, I'm taking Tyler Lockett because they took Hawkinson. Now, Tyler Lockett does currently – I he, I mean, I – Groinindex.com. The website is is so substantial, I I believe that, that Lockett is featured right now. I'm not – I mean, he should be. On the Groinindex.com. On the Groinindex. Uh, but it, it's Wait, minor. that's just – it's not the Groin. No, 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 no. It's just Groinindex. Yes. Dot com. Uh, you got to start with the Groin. <laughs> starts and ends with the Groin always – I'm not concerned. No, as not of right now. I'm, I'm, I would draft him as yes, normal. As however, I, however. Okay, let's hear this other name. Michael Thomas. When do you start? Because this is an important not discussion. Yet. When do you start to think about Michael Thomas for 
your fantasy draft. Would you think about it in the sixth round? I, you know, I think it depends on your roster. So, for instance, we only have one wide receiver. This is a locked in, necessary week one starter. If we had the luxury of saying, okay, you know, as soon as I'm putting Michael Thomas on my bench, I'm fine to take that shot. Um, and I would much, much, much rather do it in a league that has an IR slot sure. so that I can draft them and then. Because when he's taking up a bench spot, that is a there is a negative cost to your team there when it comes to your waiver transactions, even trading. Um, if you've got an IR spot in your league, then you just throw him there after the draft and you've opened up a roster spot. Well, we don't have to think about it because he went two picks after our Tyler Lockett selection. He went Lockett, Thielen, Michael Thomas, Ayuk, and Galladay. So five wide receivers in a row. Russ at the end of the fifth round. Edmonds, Chase. Oh, <laughs> It's like saying his name backwards, but <laughs> Chase Edmonds, then Jamar Thomas Chase, Jefferson, <laughs> uh, Justin Herbert, uh, Mike Davis, and Melvin Gordon. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was selected in the third round already. Um, heck of a PPR option. Yes, uh, from the presidential Great hands. position. Great hands, with, but, especially with a quill. Yeah, my goodness, uh, which he used for his contract. Stop making <laughs> Jefferson jokes. All right. We took Lockett. So our team right now, Zeke, Mixon, and Daryl Henderson, powerhouse running back room, and then Robinson and Lockett at wide receiver. This has gone well. Um, there's also another pick here that I think is really interesting. We're on the clock again. You've got wide receivers. you got Claypool. Mike loves Chase Claypool. Looks like he's going to be healthy and happy, and everything's all right there. You've got – this would That would be an auto pick for me here. Claypool would be an auto pick for yeah, you right here. Like, we, we need wide receiver – uh, I've, okay, and so I can I'm see that. Just, just saying. So. Javante Williams though, is another player you love. Yeah, and because we have the luxury of already having three running backs, do you look at him at all here, or do you? Is it just Claypool? Because of how we have built this team, I would go Claypool. But the, but Javante is a very interesting player right here. Jason, any other considerations here, or do you want to just? Um, placate Mike with uh, Chase Claypool. I would like to do no such thing. I would like to placate myself with Chase Claypool. Um, oh, I, I, I it's really a pool like. Party. I really like the talent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like you almost looked around for an audience. Yeah, there. that was like, ah, ah. nice pool party. I, I felt great about the thought and no, the it's, execution. It's, it's outstanding. But the year two wide receiver with the talent with what we saw uh, in year one. Also, keep in mind that Chase. We just Claypool, had a big discussion about these. Mm -hmm. these wide receivers these, and, uh, this, these trips these trips is that what you said yeah, yeah. as in the, the three wide receivers but again I, I'm not going to argue with the data a, at all because that's that's what the trends have been but if but a team that would have done it last year it would have been the Pittsburgh Steelers. Don't you love it when data meets data in a in a battle in a coliseum? Because well, the, like from the wide Trek? receiver to breakout age versus the yeah, three wide yeah. receiver ADP. I mean, these things something's got to give. These things are just nuggets of knowledge that we use in our in our arsenal. It's not a guarantee of right. anything. It's just more information and and the breakout potential here for Claypool definitely exists as our wide receiver three. I'm I'm thrilled with that. I did we did confirm that Tyler Lockett is featured on groinindex.com oh, thank goodness. Whew, with a quote of ah my groin. <laughs> okay, good. It's to be expected. That's what he said. Yeah. Uh well guys, I I'm I'm kind of having a hard time over here. Um it's a sad day. We're we're in a mock draft. Okay. We're in the seventh round. And I'm afraid that I'm seeing some of the future. Mm -hmm. But Tom Brady's gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so is Aaron Rodgers, Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts, and Matthew Stafford. So five quarterbacks between our sixth-round pick and seventh-round selection. Brady is not even waiting for the eighth round here. He's been selected at the very tippy-top of the seventh. We, uh, here's what, uh, my – the hope that I can bring to that is looking through the grid, which uh, – we didn't do, we didn't do this one as a, a top ten trip uh, tips and tricks this year, but we have brought up. Make sure you're paying attention. Uh, the The grid format of the draft is that's the easiest way to see what is going on, and every team has a quarterback. That's not that's not a guarantee that someone won't take a second quarterback. But currently, each team already has their QB one, and Mister Tannehill, our other late round champion, is still there. So. So don't draft per him here. Personally, no, I would I not take him. I here. would gamble. I mean, you if if you are if if you got the shakes and you're like, I don't want to miss out on this quarterback. 
okay, it's the seventh round, that's fine. But I think at the opportunity cost, you could you could bet I that have, Tannehill will come back. I, I would completely do that, and and especially in your real drafts, your live drafts. This this isn't this is a mock draft against ADP. It's possible that the computer would take a second quarterback here. Um, it's more of a gamble here than in your real draft. I don't think I, the people are crazy in, <laughs> in home drafts. Sure, people can't get crazy, but I would certainly look at that. And say every team has a quarterback. We're not going to push the envelope and, and draft one here. We'll wait. There is a a super clear pick to me right here. I want the first running back off the board from the team that had the most rushing yards in all of football by a wide margin last year. He's People are afraid of him. 1,889 yards. That is what the San Francisco 49ers ran for last year. He is clearly atop the depth chart. Injuries be darned. Wait, how many Perfect. yards did you say they ran for? 1,889 yards. Okay. Perfect. So Raheem we're, we're, Mostert, we're taking Trey Sermon. Why would you say that? <laughs> he uh, said that to get I, under your skin. Yeah, no, yeah, mostly it's for that, for the troll. Seven, but I, middle I, of the I'm, seventh round. You just talked about Miles Sanders' value in the middle of the fourth round. Raheem Mostert is sitting there in the the late seventh round I, with no respect. I am concerned about Raheem Mostert. I'm concerned what his true role actually is. And Trey Sermon, if we're only one preseason game in, but – Trey Sermon was the guy. I mean, like he has climbed the depth chart to Oster be. Mostert wasn't playing. I know, I know. I, I, I'm saying he's climbed the depth chart over the other guys who are there, and it's the way that that San Francisco, yeah, the incredible rushing team. But when all the guys are healthy, they all have a very specific role. And the the talk out of San Francisco is that Trey Sermon will be the Tevin Coleman role, and it we don't know exactly what how completely valuable that role will be because the Coleman role was always Coleman being injured. But if, but it could work out that Mostert is just the twenties guy. And then Trey Sermon is, is a, uh, the goal line guy that that has been proven that, that Shanahan prefers to go to somebody else when he comes to the goal line. My name is Jeff Wilson was the, would take those snaps over Raheem Mostert when all were healthy. I, I need to correct something I said earlier. I think I misspoke when I was talking about the total rushing yards okay. in San Francisco. They're not at the tippy top of that list. I had sorted a chart incorrectly. Oh, okay. I say Derek so, Henry so has 2,000 himself. I wanted yes. to correct that, and Jason noticed it but didn't call me out for some reason as though the stats wouldn't tell the truth. Oof. Uh, I, I, got got us to to get, say, I got us to get there. You got a Robert Frost him on but, that one. But again, I think – Last year you spent – I mean, you talked about it yesterday, what Jeff R Wilson represented, stepping into that role. Um, we don't have to take Mostert here, um, but that, would, just, that th would be my vote. I'm, that's my – I'm concerned about Mostert. So I, I do understand the concerns over, over Trey Sermon. That's the drumbeat. That's the hype. Uh, that does not get in the way of me believing that Raheem Mostert is going to be very fa valuable for fantasy. I 100% I expect him to be the starter and to be great when he's out there. He's a guy that needs 10 or 12 touches – to take something to the house. He's not a running back that is going to get 20 or needs 20 touches to be valuable. So I am 100% fine taking Raheem Mostert here. Uh, I, would it's you worth be taking Damian Harris ahead of Raheem Mostert, Mike? Because I, I, I doubt you would do that. Let me check my – I would not. Let me check my projections. I mean, while you're checking that, let me just bring up the tight end position real quick. There are about four teams that don't have their tight end yet. Um, three of them are on this turn. So there will be three times or six times before we pick again that an opportunity for a team that does not yet have a tight end to draft the tight end. Right now, there's um, Robert Tunyon, Tyler Higby, basically two tight ends I kind of really like left, but they are lower in the ADP. Uh, the Dallas Goddard will go ahead. Noah Fan will go ahead. So we could still play the game, but it's worth – this is the part of the draft where I'm trying to, I'm trying to calculate and judge where do I want to take Tunyon or Tyler Higby. I do have Harris ranked above Mostert. Who do you want to take here? Uh, I mean, I well, I I, I initiated the pool party, so I was kind of backing off here. Uh, I would. I mean, we Debo, have, Robbie Anderson, still there. Jerry Judy, Devonta Smith. Debo is Debo is interesting here as your wide receiver four, uh, and because it would be we're. we're uh, fully balanced Thanos approves of this team but because we have three running backs already 
I would be gearing up for, you know, for a little bit further along in the season. You know, those not necessarily those first four games, but maybe after that where Trey Sermon has established himself and can take the job. So I, I would, if you want a San Francisco running back here, I would take Trey Sermon. But if it were my team alone, I would take Damian Harris. And I think Andy and I are probably very close to each other here in, in Raheem you take Mostert. Mostert. Then take Mostert. All right, Noah Fant next. Goddard, Jason, you just said it. You were going to see some tight ends start to go. Damian Harris, Robbie Anderson, Juju, Jerry Judy, Debo, Cooks, David Johnson, and Devonta Smith. Oh, we're, Smith would have been a – We're back on the clock. Delightful pick here. Uh, you could uh, look back at the wide receiver position here. You've got Tyler Boyd. You've got Curtis Samuel, a favorite of Jason's. Uh, you could take a shot with Antonio Brown later in this draft. Um, we don't have one of those Tampa Bay whiteouts, although it's a he got thrown out of practice today. Not sure yeah, how yeah, we feel about that. Not worried about it. Um, you Ooh, still I have, have not seen that. You could go Robert Tunyon, last year's tight end three. You could get your tight who, end out of the way. Who do you guys have higher, Tunyon or Higby? Higby. Yeah, I do as well. I think I have Tunyon by just like a spot or two. At quarterback, you do have Tannehill, Mike. Is this the part where you grab your favorite late-round target? Because beyond Tannehill here, you're going to have a quarterback that is Lawrence, Ryan, Fitzpatrick. I'm I, really I'm comfortable taking Tanny here. I'm, I'm fine taking Ryan Tannehill here. Uh, I'm also fine... I mean, I guess even if I draft Tannehill, I would probably still be doing the rookie strategy where I'm taking Trey Lance or Justin Fields at the end. If you miss Ryan Tannehill, I think you could still get some production from Lawrence or Fitzpatrick or Cousins while you wait on one of the 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 rookie quarterbacks. Yeah, it's it's ironic. If this was a, a real draft, not a mock draft against computer, I think you're right. Maybe pairing a, uh, one of those rookies with uh, Fitzpatrick, something like that, I'd be fine with. I'd also be, ironically, more comfortable bypassing on Ryan Tannehill because I don't believe in most of the leagues I would play in that someone would be grabbing their second quarterback this early. Certainly not to get Ryan Tannehill. If they grabbed a second, it would be one of those shots on the rookies. So, uh, But now, I Ryan Tannehill's a quarterback I, I would like to leave this draft with. He is the last of the kind of tier of quarterbacks I'm looking uh, to leave with. Um, so that would be my pick All right. Uh, right now. All right, we'll take him. Ryan Tannehill with the, our eighth-round selection. Zeke Mixon, Henderson and Mostert at running back. Allen Robinson, Tyler Lockett, Chase Claypool at wide receiver. Coming around into the ninth round, my eyeballs are in the wide receiver position, maybe finding another uh, depth piece there. Uh, you did, Robert Tunyon did go, so you could be looking tight end here. If, if Higby is in that next tier where there's nobody left in that tier, you might have to go Higby here. The two teams at the edge of the draft are without tight end. So maybe we just get the tight end we want to leave the draft with here over a tight uh, wide receiver selection like yeah, Anto Pittman, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown or Pittman, those are the two guys I would be between here um, at, at wide receiver. But with one tight end left that I really want, uh, four picks from teams on that turn that are in need of a tight end, yeah, grab, grab the guy that you want. And this is great because we waited till late in the draft and we got Tannehill and Higby, which I think is a great tight end quarterback uh, pairing and now we can focus on some of those wide receivers so we took Higby and two more tight ends did go after we took Higby so it's probably the right pick Logan Thomas and Gesicki both went three running backs AJ Dillon uh, James Conner and Singletary went in this run no more Antonio Brown available no yeah. more Michael Pittman available that stinks but there are names I mean there's the number one wide receiver in New York Corey Davis here in the 10th round you have shots on Henry Ruggs with the second year breakout and the data that Jason's brought forth. You've got Marvin Jones, who looks like the one clearly for Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. Um, or you could uh, mess around at the running back position. There aren't names that I love. And I feel like grabbing most are where we did kind of locked up our running backs in a way that makes me feel comfortable. So I would lean probably. Yeah, I Ruggs, Davis. I think we need to look wide receiver here. And you you named two great options, Corey Davis and Henry Ruggs. One is uh, a volume number one target that as a rookie it, quarterback. That is not going to be special at all. One is a cuttable or breakoutable player. Um, you know what I mean? Like Henry Ruggs, the, he's an uncrustable. <laughs> um, 
so I think it depends on you got to look at your wide receivers on your roster. So right now we've got Allen Robinson, Tyler Lockett, Chase Claypool. Two how, thirds are injured right now. How confident are we? Like, do we need a uh, do we need a sure thing to plug a spot and uh, for an injury and and be able to slide into that flex position, or do we need to swing for the fences at this point with our roster construction? Which which way do you guys lean? I lean the plug a spot, have a bona fide player that you know he could have some upside I mean there is the possibility that Zach Wilson comes out and I mean he's looked good so far and maybe he laser focuses on Corey Davis it's not a sexy pick I mean it's not there, um, there's another not and I'd sexy, be fine with Marvin Jones too there's another not sexy pick that I think we could get next round or I mean maybe even the round after at wide receiver that I think is both kind of a, a somewhat sure thing and has a little bit of upside. Nelson Aguilar is someone that at the end of drafts, I think he fits our roster pretty well. I would not take him here, but at least worth Mike, watching. Mike, who, who do you want here? Long. Make the pick. I would take Corey Davis. Uh, un unfortunately, it, drafting today with Tyler Lockett, we're not worried about the groin injury, but it's there. Chase Claypool, I'm not worried about the ankle, but it does exist. So just in case uh, one of those players isn't available week one, you would want someone who's going to see a, a, a high volume of targets to plug in for week one. All right, we took Davis, and now it's our 11th round selection. Had a couple more tight ends go off the board. Gronk and uh, Big Irv, Swervin Irvin. All right. Uh, and then you had Philip Lindsay, who we talked about recently. Henry Ruggs did go two picks ahead of us, so we could have come back with Henry Ruggs and got both, but not quite. And we saw a defense go off the board here in the 11th round, the Rams defense. So, Jason, I'm going to hand the pick to you, and who do you want? Uh, I definitely think we should still be focusing at wide receiver. We're done at running back, in my opinion, with Zeke, Mixon, Henderson, and Mostert. Um, Russell Gage, Nelson Aguilar, Marvin Jones. Those are the three guys. I mean, w without a doubt, it's AJ between Green. those three guys um, and AJ only AJ those Green. three guys. There's nobody else, no super <laughs> old wide receivers that I <laughs> see uh, that I would ever want to put on my roster. Um, and I'm going to stick with what I said, you know, last round and what I believe in Nelson Aguilar's, uh, I, I think he's kind of locked in. We, I've, I've been talking to a lot of people from the Boston area recently and the, his, his camp has been great. He is the one uh, he's going to be on the field all the time. They paid him a lot of money. So to get him in the 11th round, he could end up being a top now, 24 wide receiver. Would you, I mean, clearly you, you do prefer him, but I, I, I look at, Aguilar and Tyrell Williams, the the new wide receiver for the Detroit Lions, almost in a very similar situation where they're they are the new one, but when you're looking at quarterback, I mean Jared Goff has is, part, has a better arm than Cam Newton at this point. The tough part with Tyrell is that you are coming; he, it's the backside of his career. He's had, he's been banged up for two straight years. He, sure. He's shifting to and and at least Aguilar has looked to. He's delivering on the promise of the draft and was just paid a bunch of money to go do that, yeah, which and, splits the difference for me. And the big split difference for me is the fact that while I do think Tyrell Williams is the wide receiver one, he is not the number one target there. Hawkinson, I still believe, is going to be 130-plus okay. target That's fair. guy. So now he's the second receiving option. I want to take a shot at having the first receiving option. Mike, I'm going to give you our last positional pick before our defense here. Marvin Jones still on the board. Russell Gage, who I try to get Russell Gage at the back of every single draft I'm in. Uh, he has tremendous upside. You could shoot your shot on somebody that you are looking to get a week one performance from and then drop. You know, it's like if they don't deliver, it could be a Jalen Rager. It could be a... You can also just throw this out there. I, I don't like doing it before the second to last round. Uh, so don't get too cute in your drafts. But in that second to last round, if there's a defense that you're targeting, you could go that way and then take your last positional pick uh, with your next one, which Ravens, to me would Steelers. be... Right, the, the Ravens are great. But the 49ers also, they start with the... Uh, <laughs> they start with the Lions and Eagles. That's so, yeah, that's not bad. Delicious. Yeah, uh, I bet we could get him with the last pick. I'll bet you're right. If I'm looking at like there's, you could take a backup running back here, an insurance running back, just in case something's happening throughout the you know training camp or week one. If I'm looking at the wide receiver position, Russell Gage is Russell Gage is, is so tough because. He should see a bunch of volume. We saw that switch last year once once Julio Jones was finally out. Russell Gage was a big part of the offense. Uh, I think that Kyle Pitts can create a problem for that volume. And Russell, a bet on Russell Gage is 
simply that. You are really hoping that there's a bunch of volume because he's a fine player, but I don't think at this point we're proclaiming that Russell Gage is going to level up and become a truly special player. Would you look at Rashad Penny? I would no. Would I, I, I wouldn't. I was going to get James to White, AJ Green. No, I would be, I'd be looking at a wide receiver. I, for you, Andy. I would be looking at another second year wide receiver, and so I, for me, uh, two players that can take a step: Jalen Rager, who's finally getting like positive vibes out of the Eagles training camp. It has really turned around. I know I'm, where he's going. And do you Brian Edwards? Yes. The other player who is a second year wide receiver. I'm giving him to you. All of the arguments for why Henry Ruggs can be great. Those all are the exact same arguments you can make for Brian Edwards, who was a third round pick broke out at in college with an unbelievably young breakout age. And he's getting a lot of hype and a lot, a lot of love. Got some, got some bonus love from his quarterback, Derek Carr just yesterday. So I, I'm in on Edwards as a deep sleeper. Well, the nice thing is uh, when he fails in week one, you can just let him go. He's your 12th, sure. round, he's your 12th round pick. Uh, give me a uh, defense, Jason. We need somebody with a nice week one matchup. Yeah, it's between the, the Browns and the uh, Broncos, so let's take a look. The Browns play the Chiefs week one. Let's oh, go Broncos. I took the Browns. Okay, well, that was dumb. <laughs> the reason I did is I thought you said it was between those two because they both had a great first – Week matchup. Nope. Uh, Why was it between? <laughs> Why did you say it's between the two? Those are the two defenses that were great. Let me look up the week one schedule. And uh, as I looked it up, I saw that the Browns play the Chiefs. Why did week you one. say? Oh, because okay. those, because the Browns are great defense. I, I think but they're the Broncos be good this aren't year. a great defense. I think the Broncos are. A great I think defense. they're very solid. Yeah, they are. But it, in, in, in to, wait, let's see who the Broncos. To play be week fair to one. Andy, that was a real rope a dope move. <laughs> it really <laughs> Got was. Him. That's all right. Here's the deal. Just drop the Browns, pick someone else up with a good matchup. I mean, it's not the end of the world. The defense is, uh, it, you know, it's worth talking about for a second. Do not think that you should lock a defense in throughout the season. You will do far, 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 far worse than just playing the matchups week in and week out. Obviously, if you end up hitting that one team, you know, last year the Steelers or five years ago the Jaguars, it, it's not usually the team we think it's going to be. That's great, but for the most part, you need to stream the position against the matchups more than the quality of the defense. <laughs> right. Um, I always look for the Chiefs matchup in my defenses. That's what I was, what I was honing in on. Uh, Zeke Mixon, Daryl Henderson, and Mostert are our four running backs. Allen Robinson, Tyler Lockett, Chase Claypool, Corey Davis, Nelson Aguilar, and Brian Edwards at wide receiver. Tannehill and Higby fill in the onesie positions, quarterback okay. and tight end. And the, uh, well, the Browns. We got the Browns too. For now. For now, it would uh, be we'll, a... we'll make a we'll make a swap <laughs> ski, but uh, that'll do it for today's mock draft. Tomorrow is the oh, my guys episode, baby, and we've had a lot of people on social media at the FF Ballers on Twitter and on our Instagram attempting to guess the my guys for each of us. Uh, and I can say this: I know a couple people have. Guest Jasons. Yeah, I've had almost a thousand comments on my two posts, and I think I've seen two or three correct guesses. I have yet to see a complete trifecta of mine. Likewise, I've seen a lot of people with two thirds of who I'm going to select, but I've not seen all three of them. So tomorrow, you'll know the answer. It's the My Guys episode of the show. So and oh, today, live stream. Don't forget it. Uh, we are going to be on this afternoon. Make sure you join us. Find out if you want a UDK for a life. Yeah, ballerslive.com. That's the easiest way to get there. We'll be going live at what time, uh, Judge Giamatti? What's our exact time? 7 Eastern? 7 Eastern. Okay. 4 Pacific. All right. You can get the Ultimate Draft Kit at what ultimatedraftkit.com. I don't think we're – it's one hour ahead. Six? No, no, no. It's, I think it's uh, – Five Mountain. Five Mountain? I think it's Five Mountain. Yep. Okay. What is it in Hawaii? <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show as we close things out. A Cortland Sutton signed full-size helmet right now, $58 in Saturday night. Derek Henry signed jerseys at 26 bucks, But there are hundreds of daily auctions at pristineauction.com. Your favorite players are on there. And you can use the code BALLERS and get a $10 credit. That'll do it for today. It is football time, Mike. I don't know if you knew that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, America. But we'll be back tomorrow, and yep. we will see you then. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.